As the future of the Romanian president rests in the hands of his people, we ask, is this referendum to impeach the president a good indicator of the state of democracy in Romania? And is it the beginning of the end for Traian Basescu? Or will he manage to survive as he has before? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Deri Nabugeda. Romanians have been voting on Sunday to decide whether or not to impeach their president, Traian Basascu. The referendum was held after a government campaign led by the Prime Minister Victor Ponta. The international community has criticized that decision. Al Jazeera's Rory Challenge has more. Polls opened early on Sunday morning. The government wants as many people as possible to vote on the future of their president, Traian Basescu. He survived an impeachment referendum before, five years ago. This time, it's different. He may still have the support of some diehards, but austerity measures and scandals have blown a big hole in his popularity. And now he has a ruthless opponent. The young, left-leaning Prime Minister Victor Ponta accuses the Premier of violating the Constitution and overstepping his powers. President Basescu, it's, it's, uh, it's a strong personality. He used to be, in 2005-2006, the most popular politician in all our democratic history. Now he's the most unpopular politician in our democratic history. It's, uh, maybe it's a person of extreme. In May, the former Prime Minister, Mihai Ungarianu, was ousted by Ponta in a vote of no confidence. It was the start of a brutally efficient attack on the president's power base. The um, result is a... Um, non-violent but very aggressive takeover um, of power and um, executive and legislative power. Everything that's been going on in the Palace of Parliament would just be fascinating political theatre if it wasn't for the very sad fact that this is having a real impact on Romania. The country's currency is falling, its international standing has slumped and Parliament has been paralysed for months. The European Union has taken a particularly dim view of the feuding, voicing concerns about the state of democracy in Romania. But even some of those saddened by Romania's politicians admit the referendum may have its upsides. When the political actors fight each other, we learn new things. We learn how much each of them stole. Banners urging Romanians to vote hang in the streets. Anything under a 50% turnout would invalidate the result and save the president's career. More than 50% and the polls suggest he's finished. But with a parliamentary election later this year, Romanians are preparing themselves for even more political hostility. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Bucharest. So, is this impeachment referendum the beginning of the end for Traian Basascu, or will he, as before, survive? To answer these questions, we're joined by our three guests from the Romanian capital, Bucharest, Monica Luisa Makove, a former Romanian justice minister. Ms. Makove is also a member of the European Parliament. Also, we have with us Razvan Ionescu, a journalist and political analyst. And joining us on the line is Titus Kralacian. He's the Romanian justice minister. Mr. Kralacian is also a member of the Social Democratic Party. Welcome to all of you to this edition of uh, Inside Story. Mr. Kolacian, if I can come over to you uh, first, your Prime Minister, uh, Victor Ponta, is being accused by some of uh, staging a coup. What's your reaction? Well, uh, many things were uh, told during this uh, campaign on the referendum. But uh, if we want to have a a really honest uh, debate. Uh, I think the most important thing that we have to emphasize at this uh, stage is the fact that there is a reality that a political fracture exists, and not only for today. It existed for already uh, several years. Don't uh, forget the fact that uh, Mr. Basescu is in his eighth, already eighth uh, year of uh, the second mandate of being president, and 
he was not, unfortunately, and it was also confirmed by the Constitutional Court uh, uh, four weeks ago, he was not uh, performing his mandate as president of being a real mediator within the society. He was right, but let me, if I can just interrupt you for one second, because your constitution uh, specifically states that the head of state can only be impeached for only grave misdeeds. Have any been cited? What grounds are there for his impeachment? Uh, the Parliament uh, debated on different uh, poison and acts of accusation that were raised against the President, and uh, based on uh, an advisory opinion that was given by the Constitutional Court, at least in two or even three points, uh, uh, serious uh, or important issues were, were raised and confirmed even by the Constitutional Court. The first was uh, that I, I intended to, to start and to mention it, the fact that uh, uh, the President didn't uh, uh, fulfill properly his uh, mandate as president of being mediator, a real mediator within the Romanian society between different uh, institutions and political actors. He was deeply involved in the political uh, debate and being acting as a president of a political party and not a president of, uh, of the Romanians. Uh, there are, are also several other points that were raised, and uh, at one point, for instance, the Constitutional Court itself mentioned the fact that it's the competence of the Parliament to decide on uh, what was uh, related to uh, very uh, bad uh, uh, conduct and a very bad uh, uh, statement, uh, discriminatory uh, statement related, for instance, I can give you one example, to uh, uh, a ethnic group, the Roma and Gypsy community in, in uh, Romania All was right. uh, several times uh, accused with uh, bad words by the president. And okay, the, just uh, hang on one second, court. because you mentioned the constitutional court. Now, Victor Ponta himself has significantly limited the authority of the constitutional court. Your prime minister, in fact, has changed the referendum law to make it easier to get rid of Basescu. And some people say that this, this move is unconstitutional. Look, um, in April this year, so only three months previously, Mr. Basescu and his majority in the parliament at that moment changed the rules of the, the referendum to be very correct when we make uh, some statements. After that, it was a coming back to uh, the legislation on the referendum that was in force until April. So during the years, there were several changes of the law on the referendum, and every and each model was confirmed by the Constitutional Court as being constitutional. Why? Because the Constitution doesn't uh, mention in its text a certain level of participation of the people to validate the referendum. The, uh, the, uh, the court uh, judges uh, only the big uh, values and uh, principles of the Constitution. And different models, including the uh, legislation that was proposed by the government during the years, was confirmed of being uh, constitutional. But in the end, of course, uh, the, the parliament uh, accepted uh, the decision of the Constitutional Court on the last legislation. And uh, this referendum is uh, developing under this uh, rule with a uh, quite uh, important level of participation for being validated. 51% of all the voters uh, put it on the, on the list. Well, Basescu uh, and his allies say that they're concerned, in fact, about the possibility of election fraud, rigging, unclear voter lists. Uh, Ponto himself got rid of uh, the only independent ombudsman. Are there independent monitors uh, keeping an eye on the voting going on? on in Romania, or how can you ensure that there is no voter oh, there, rigging? There are many, uh, actually, there are many observers, national and international observers, and uh, despite the accusations of uh, the actual opposition, and we're in the middle of a political battle, you can imagine that there are accusations, the institution of the state organized uh, uh, very well this referendum. I should say, for the contrary, the fact that the conduct of the president, who changed his opinion only after two weeks, uh, when making an appeal to the people not to be present uh, uh, during the referendum for voting, which is a normal and a democratic procedure, not to, to be present, to boycott, it's a fundamentally undemocratic uh, conduct. And this is not exactly that uh, he transmitted uh, to his uh, European friends, uh, saying that there is a need for uh, letting the people to, to participate in the referendum, to express their will. For the contrary, now he's playing against the will of the people to, to let them to come to freely to vote. And I think that this is a very undemocratic uh, conduct of the president and uh, his team. 
I'm going to bring in my two guests in just a moment, but if I can just stick with you for a few more questions, Mr. Korlachian, since we have you with us on the telephone. Now, the EU itself is saying that Ponta has won this referendum by trampling on the country's constitution. These are the words of the European Union and resorting to emergency decrees to force the issue. Are you not worried that this move and this re referendum will jeopardize relations with the European Union? Also, your membership, Romania's membership to the Schengen zone? Look, uh, several points of concern that uh, were raised by different uh, European farmers, starting with the European Commission, were discussed in Brussels by the Prime Minister with the President of uh, the European Commission, Mr. Barroso, and some other important officials. And it was a very fast reaction and uh, a, uh, a letter that uh, gave already uh, important answers to these uh, concerns. And I think we, we advanced quite properly in the diminishing uh, uh, the point of concern. We are very serious as concerned the interest of Romania. This is why, for instance, we, this government maintained the commitment and will maintain next week because we have a mission of the IMF and the European Commission and the World Bank. We uh, maintain the commitment and we are respecting our international commitment of the country. This is why we are transmitting signals of stability and the economy, despite the, this, uh, 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 some movements of the currency, the, the uh, economy remains stable and the ratings of Romania were confirmed by the big uh, agencies in, in, uh, in the world. So this is why I hope that this political battle will end after this day and we will reach a necessary peace within the Romanian society for letting the government to do its business related to the big economic and social issues, which are the most important uh, for, for the Romanian people. Okay, let me ask you this then. What happens if Basescu is not impeached by the people and in fact he stays in office? Uh, what will be the response from Victor Ponta and his party? Look, at this stage it's uh, still uh, too early to to mention what will be, first of all, the results. Uh, definitely, it will be a huge ma majority of the people who will concretely vote uh, in favor of the impeachment. I don't know, uh, we don't know yet if uh, uh, those 9 million uh, votes uh, requested to validate the, the referendum will be uh, uh, achieved in the end because it's summer, summer is very hot, and uh, still the presence of the people is a good uh, uh, presence, but not a perfect one. We will see. The Constitutional Court will make uh, the assessment of the results uh, probably uh, tomorrow. And if the referendum will not be validated because uh, uh, maybe not of 9 million people being present, we don't know yet. But if this will be the case, the Constitutional Court already said a few days ago uh, during uh, a decision that it was taken that the Parliament will establish the next steps to be taken. So we will uh, wait for the, the result. Definitely there will be many millions of voters that will vote uh, strongly in favour of the impeachment. We have to wait if there will be 9 million people that will be present uh, to the vote. All right, uh, Mr. Titus uh, Korlechen, the Romanian Justice Minister, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for talking to Inside Story. Let me uh, go over to uh, Monica in uh, Monica Luisa Makovai, who's a former Romanian Justice Minister, in fact, and she's joining us uh, as well from Bucharest. Uh, good to have you with us. I wonder if you uh, got the chance to listen to the uh, Justice Minister speaking there. Just uh, he made a lot of points. Uh, respond to his claims. And do you think that Basescu should go? Uh, I do not think, and uh, this is not really about uh, the President Basescu. It is about the democracy and the rule of law, which were suspended, uh, to say nicely, in Romania in the last month. And uh, if I may make a few points related to what the Minister said previously, uh, you rightly said that in the Romanian Constitution, uh, it, it reads that the President can be suspended only if he perpetrated serious facts which violated the Constitution. Uh, the Constitutional Court was asked the opinion on this and there was no, there is no wording and there was no claim uh, coming from uh, USL, the Social Liberal Union, uh, on which the Constitutional Court to have said that this was a serious fact to violate the Constitution. Therefore, uh, the president didn't violate the constitution. Uh, now, uh, all these emergency ordinances 
the minister referred to the emergency ordinance on referendum. I referred to changes uh, taking place uh, some time ago. Uh, I want to say one thing, and it's only information. The emergency ordinance, which eliminated the uh, quorum needed for a referendum, only with relation to the dismissal of president, to the referendum to dismiss the president, <clears throat> this emergency ordinance was adopted in the evening of the 5th of July. The suspension of the president took two days. 5th of July and 6th of July. On the 5th, the accusations were read. On the 6th, it was voted. Now, in the middle of this procedure, in the, on the 5th of July, in the evening, Ponta's government adopted an emergency ordinance and changed the rule on the referendum, saying that right. it doesn't matter how many people come. So, w which was the urgency? Because these emergency ordinances are if it's a calamity coming or an earthquake or something. Razvan, do Romanians uh, think that Basescu should remain in office? I mean, what's been the local reaction to his suspension and possible impeachment? No, first of all, the uh, Romanian people are very polar polarized now, like uh, never in the last 22 years. I don't remember a moment after the uh, 1990, exactly after the revolution, when we had a uh, big fight between the ex-communists and the reformers uh, with this kind of uh, polarization between people, between relatives, between friends. You can see this, this conflict also on uh, uh, social uh, networks like uh, uh, fa Facebook with uh, people uh, who are very friends, good friends, and uh, um, uh, they enter in conflict for at public at, uh, on, on Facebook. Um, I think we have, we should understand Romanian democracy, it's still young after 22 years. And uh, we should learn more than, uh, uh, than we learned till now. Uh, the democracy means also uh, to understand when we disagree one with each other. It's exactly what happened between Basescu and uh, his uh, opponents and it's also what happened with the people with the normal people uh, now the right, people but Monica who support, Basescu, uh, Basescu uh, Monica like, Basescu uh, himself uh, I apologize uh, to interrupt there but Monica Basescu himself in fact has faced allegations of corruption he's also faced allegations of voter fraud and impropriety since he became president and his re-election to a second term and that was in 2009 was itself marred by accusations of fraud uh, this was what the opposition said after they lost, but accusation of corruption I never heard. He was accused of something related to the fleet at the beginning of 90s. He resigned from the parliament to be investigated and to eliminate the immunity uh, uh, obstacle, and uh, he was never uh, convicted. But let me say again that this is not about the president. A president should be suspended if he perpetrated serious facts that violated the Constitution. And really, the Constitutional Court <clears throat> is the one to find this, to, to decide on this. Even the political decision is with the parliament. But a responsible parliament should look at the, what Constitutional Court say. This is about the rule of law. We do not accept that we go to bed with a law on a referendum or on the Constitutional Court or uh, on the official journal <clears throat> or many other laws and we wake up in the morning with these laws changed by emergency ordinance. Maybe people don't know what these emergency ordinance are. They are like laws adopted by the government. Uh, they are published in the official journal, which by the way was taken by Ponta under his authority, also by an emergency ordinance and they became law the next second, so they entered into force immediately. He cut the powers of the Constitutional Court to verify the decisions of the Parliament by an emergency ordinance. You never heard this in a democracy. And he did that because the President was to be suspended next day and the heads of the, uh, of the two chambers of the Parliament by decisions of the Parliament, so he prohibited the Constitutional Court to look at these decisions by emergency ordinance. Right, uh, Razvan. Uh, there are many other examples. 
Uh, let me cross over to Razvan, Monica, for just a second. Uh, Razvan, do you think uh, that Ponta underestimated uh, the reaction from the international community because the EU has come out and uh, has uh, had some harsh words uh, to say towards uh, Ponta? And also, does this, in fact, cast doubt over the IMF, the International Monetary Fund's support for Romania? Yeah. The, the first problem is uh, uh, Mr. Victor Ponta, the Prime Minister, has two kind of speeches. One here in Romania and another one when uh, he's speaking with uh, international authorities, with uh, international political uh, uh, leaders. Because for uh, his interlock, uh, for the people who are speaking with him on the international political scene, it's very difficult to, to explain them how he and uh, how Mr. Ponta and his partners suspended for two, three weeks the rule, the rule of law in, uh, in Romania and how it's possible in the, in the strong democratic system to organize a popularity or a beauty contest for the president because it's exactly what we have uh, now. Uh, the leaders of uh, Mr. Ponta and his partners organize this referendum also because they feel the people, the most of the Romanian people are against Mi uh, Mr. Basescu, the President Basescu, because the, the economic crisis, because the austerity measures, because a lot of mistakes in the, in the last two, three years in, in, um, um, in, the, in government uh, for Mr. Basescu and his partner. But in the strong democratic system, the president should, could be suspended an impeachment of the president it's a it's a exception it's exactly how we have right in our constitution also also only be, uh, if we have uh, uh, acts very grave acts against constitution anti-constitutional and we don't have this kind of acts of president uh, uh, basescu uh, that's why i think Today, we have a popularity contest during the legal term of the presidency, uh, exactly in the middle of the uh, legal term of five years. Uh, Monica, the economy really seems to be one of the issues at uh, the heart of this political crisis. I mean, what's your take on the economy? Uh, will the IMF suspend its loan pro program, do you think, in the wake of all this political instability in Romania? And also, uh, does this set some sort of precedent for future governments for this to happen again? Uh, I strongly believe that this will be a precedent not to happen again. Uh, now, from the economic point of view, uh, I don't know if the agreement will be kept, but definitely more uh, guarantees will be asked. Uh, but I have to tell you, and you probably know, that the national currency dropped dramatically in the last uh, two, three weeks because of this instability and because, uh, and because of changing the laws. And also all the investors, the big investors stopped. They think uh, they want predictability. So they think if you change the law overnight uh, to, to serve your purpose to, uh, uh, to dismiss the president, you can do that uh, in any other area overnight. So I'm not going to invest in, in your country. And the same with the European funds, with the European Commission. So if they are not stopped and the rule of law is not reinstalled, all the population risk uh, to be really very poor and uh, not to get investors and uh, to have a very poor uh, currency, which is a pity because we are really doing fine because all these events uh, uh, within the European uh, uh, Union. And I'd like to say something uh, uh, to which uh, 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 the, the journalist before me mentioned, the double speech in Brussels and at home of, of the Prime Minister. He was in Brussels on the 12th of July uh, and he talked to Barroso and he came back with a to-do list uh, with a lot of things, uh, which he didn't, uh, but right. he promised he will. And when he arrived home the next day on the 13th of July, he signed, he signed a written agreement together with the other leaders uh, in his coalition by which uh, the, one of their objective was to dismantle the Constitutional Court, to dismantle 
the National Integrity Agency to dismantle the prosecutor office okay. which investigate corruption and to dismantle uh, the office which is looking at the archives of the Securitate. All right, so I'm afraid I'll have to jump in there. We've come to the end of the program. I do apologize, but we did get your uh, your message. Thank you very much, uh, Monica, Luisa, Makovai, Razvan, well, Ionescu. I'd like to thank you for joining us from Bucharest. And thank, thank you. you to our viewers for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. You can always send us your feedback. Email your thoughts to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Thanks for watching. From me and the whole team, goodbye for now.